Ready to go? Yes. Okay. Go ahead and start the call, please. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. My last call tonight. 14th day. <laughs> okay. Good night. All right. We're ready to rock. <laughs> Good afternoon and welcome to the No, 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 I start. Okay. Quiet. <laughs> <laughs> no, really. There's nobody on yet. We're all best okay, leaving God. right now. Right. I get to go first. Okay, good. <laughs> welcome, everybody. Welcome to our Telephone Town Hall meeting. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're going to be on for the next hour. If you have a question, please press zero, zero on the keypad in your phone. We'll get you and your question queued up as fast as we can. Now, we're going to read the questions today. So take your time with the screeners to say what you want to say. If we read the questions over the air, we get a lot more questions in. So we got some people that are going to talk about certain things in the beginning. It might take up 20 minutes of the hour just talking about certain stuff. But after that, we're taking questions. And so if you want to ask a question, you can ask it now, you can ask it later. Press zero, that's zero on the keypad on your phone. Don't be shy. Zero on the keypad on your phone, and we will get your question queued up, and we will read it over the air. I'm going to do this a couple more times while we're dialing up. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our Telephone Town Hall meeting. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. If you have a question, please press zero, that's zero on the keypad on your phone, and press, uh, no, we're just, we're not taking email address. Zero, we're going to have a bunch of questions come in. Now, I'm going to read all questions over the air one way or the other, whether you're on the Spanish side or whether you're on the English side. It doesn't matter. We want to get through as many questions as possible. The first part of this call is going to be from some experts. They're going to tell you what's going on and all that kind of stuff. So listen to that really intently. There might even be some numbers and information you might want to write down. So you might want to get a pad and, pen and all that kind of stuff. One more time, welcome to our Telephone Town Hall meeting. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're going to be on for the next, now 40, 58 minutes. If you have a question, please press zero, zero on the keypad on your phone. And if I could, I'm going to hand this off to Shelly. Shelly, introduce yourself and everybody else and take your time. We're ready to go. Go ahead, Shelly. Ah, good afternoon and welcome to Stockton Unified School District's Coronavirus Telephone Town Hall meeting. Featuring Dr. John Daisy, Superintendent of Schools, Mayor Michael Tubbs, Ms. Sanja Lowry, Assistant Superintendent of Educational Services, Ms. Bernadette Betancourt, our Director of Comprehensive Health Services, and Mr. Nick Howard, Interim Assistant Superintendent of Human Capital. My name is Shelley Sussard and I'm the Director of Community Relations for Stockton Unified. Members of our district team are on the line, and we want to remind everyone to listen closely as there will be prompts when we move through this teleconference. Please stay on the line to listen to the Telephone Town Hall, to ask a question, or to get help with school district related questions. This is a live event. We are also streaming on Facebook with thousands of Stockton Unified families and stakeholders. We encourage anyone with a question to press zero. If you have a question for Dr. Daisy, Mayor Michael Tubbs, Ms. Sanja Lowry, our Director of Comprehensive Health Services, Ms. Bernadette Betancourt, or our Interim Assistant Superintendent of Human Capital, Mr. Nick Howard, you may press zero now. An operator will take your question, and you may have an opportunity to ask it live on the call. We will have our moderate, moderator announcing all of the questions that we take. You can ask about any issue that's important to you, but for this event, we will focus on issues relating to the coronavirus. As always, you can press zero if you need assistance from any of our departments. We'll take down your information and do everything we can to help. The event will last about an hour, and with thousands of people on the call, we may not be able to get to every question. Just stay on the line and we'll do our best to get to you. At the end of the call, you'll also have an opportunity to leave a voicemail 
for the superintendent or any of our other team members. We promise to get back in touch with you. Remember, if you press zero, you will be given assistance and help from any of our departments. We'll take down your information and do everything we can to help. And with that, I'd like to introduce you to our superintendent of schools, Dr. John Daisy. Thank you. We're going to begin this afternoon uh, with some comments by the mayor of the city of Stockton, Mayor Michael Tubbs. I'll make some comments after that, and these are primary issues of information, uh, along with the rest of our team, and then we will welcome questions. We're very glad you're joining us. Mr. Mayor. Good evening and welcome everyone. This is Mayor Michael Tubbs. Thank you so much to Superintendent John Daisy and the entire Stockton Unified team um, for your leadership during this very challenging time um, for the city. As of this afternoon, we have had 51 confirmed cases of coronavirus in San Joaquin County and two deaths. Um, we, and we, as we've been saying the past week, we all must do our part to rise and meet this challenge head on. I want to also thank all the district staff um, today and every day who work so hard to diligently serve our families. Um, the city of Stockton, for our part, announced a local emergency on March 12th. And since then, the state and the county have issued additional emergency declarations and new policies to mitigate the impact of coronavirus. The governor last week issued a stay-at-home order. I'd like to emphasize that this is a statewide order and one that the city of Stockton and our residents can, should, and will comply with for essential needs and essential workers. So there are some locations that are still open and some things that are, you are still able to do. For example, gas stations, pharmacies, grocery stores, food banks, takeout and delivery restaurants, banks, laundry mats, and essential state and local government programs and services will remain open. You can also go outside to walk or exercise, to walk your pet, or even visit a park, as long as you stay six feet from people who aren't part of your household. By contrast, dining restaurants, bars and nightclubs, entertainment venues, gyms and fitness studios, public events, convention centers, and even hair and nail salons um, will be closed. We know that these restrictions are not fun, they're not easy, and they're a sacrifice for everyone, but they're done in the interest of public health. But for these um, directives to work, we all have to do our part. We know that some essential workers are still working out of home, but every single person in this community has an essential job, and that's to stay at home as much as possible to mitigate the spread of coronavirus in our communities. Um, tomorrow at the city council meeting, the city of Stockton will, will allocate over a million dollars to kind of help small businesses with the impact of such um, orders will have um, on, on, on the bottom line. So again, we know this is not fun. We know this is not easy, but we also know that this is very important um, for mitigating the spread of coronavirus and for public health concerns um, in our city. Additionally, the City Council has also passed red legislation to establish a moratorium on residential evictions. Um, tomorrow we'll consider one commercial evictions. And also we're not doing utility shutoffs during the stay at home order. Again, this is a lot of information to take in and developments might change. So in order to share out as much information as possible, including opportunities to volunteer, we have launched a new coronavirus website for Stocktonians www.stoptonstrong.org. Please check it out and share it with others. Again, Stocktonians, it's the time to prepare um, and not to panic, to prepare to be generous, to prepare to spend time in our house, to prepare um, to help all those in need and to prepare to emerge from this crisis even more united as a community. Um, and I'll end with saying, particularly for our residents in our city who are Chinese American or Asian descent, that the city of Stockton, that, that there's no place for, for racism here, and that you all are part of this community and we'll all get through this coronavirus crisis together. Thank you so much, Mayor Michael Tubbs. I would now like to introduce you to Superintendent John Facey, who will share his update. Buenas noches, bienvenidos, good evening and welcome. We are holding this live Stockton Unified Coronavirus Town Hall 
to provide our district families and stakeholders an update on all of the measures that we are taking related to the COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak and to share the best practices that we are doing with our families to support them and help protect them. I'm joined by key members of our staff, which were introduced earlier. As a reminder, if you have a question, please press zero when we get ready to take those. California, the city of Stockton, San Joaquin County, and now the United States have all declared a state of emergency regarding the coronavirus outbreak. Stockton Unified Families and Staff can locate accurate, up to the date, district information. We update it several times a day regarding this virus by visiting our website, www.stocktonusd.net backslash COVID-19, C-O-V-I-D-19. There's a direct button right on the front page of our website. We strongly suggest that families download the free Stockton Unified mobile app available in app, Apple or Google stores to receive district updates directly on their phone. The safety and the well-being of our students, our staff and our faculty has, is and has been and will continue to be our top priority. As a reminder, all pre-K through 12 and adult classes have been canceled across San Joaquin County, including Stockton Unified Public Schools. While physical classes may be canceled, our learning with our students continues. So does our meals. Today we began the ability to serve our meals to our students. All of our families have received the notification of the sites to go to. And we know that you got that because it was a privilege today to serve more than 15,600 meals. I and many people in the district, amazing support staff, our food service staff, our administration were there so that every student who came was able to get a meal. Please remember there is a single federal regulation, which is not ours, but must be followed, and that is students need to be present in the vehicle in order for us to be able to serve them. We've been doing cleaning while schools were closed last week for spring break and for the foreseeable future. Our amazing custodial staff is currently deep cleaning and sanitizing all surface contact at every single site, and that entire process is expected to be concluded by Tuesday, March 24th, with final touch-ups on Wednesday, March 25th. After that, we will begin to repeat cleaning if any part of the building is opened or used. We've had incredible volunteers, and we are thankful for our volunteers. And I want to express how appreciative we have been that you can help us to distribute our learning packets to students. Today ran very smoothly and our families were incredibly grateful. It was just so heartwarming to see so many parents and students as we passed those out along with our meals. Volunteers have been helping us only with our learning packets. And at the moment, we actually have more volunteers than we can actually schedule, but we will use you on a rotating basis. And remember all but everybody in the system following the guidelines of the Centers for Disease Control, County and State Health. Washing your hands with soap and water frequently, avoid touching your eyes, your nose and your mouth, avoid close contact with individuals who have been sick, staying away from work and other people if you yourself become sick, and adhering to social distancing. These are the standard pieces that we have been publicizing since this began. And additional support begins tomorrow. Stockton Unified is going to be very proud to offer our Student Support Services Helpline for families and students during our school closures. The helpline will be made available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 3.30 p.m. Notice will again go out to every family of the number that you will call and be prompted in one option to speak to a school nurse if you need to, in another option to speak to a school counselor if you need to, and a third option to speak to a mental health clinician if you need to. You're also able to leave a message for our child welfare and attendance department. 
We just want to make clear that this is a support services hotline. This is not if you have a medical or psychiatric emergency. In those cases, you should always call 911. Among the things that we were able to see today, that was and our parents, our guardians, and our caregivers. I know I speak for every single person who was out there today in support, that it was very heartwarming to see you. We miss seeing you on a regular basis, but we know that for the foreseeable future, this is how we are going to have to operate while the entire country, including California, manages to get through this virus. Updates are continued regularly, and we ask you to obviously check in with our website. Let us give you a little bit more information for our educational side with Sanjay Lowry, our Assistant Superintendent. Good evening, and thanks to all for joining in on the call. As Superintendent Daisy mentioned earlier, physical classes may be canceled, but learning for Stockton Unified students is not. At the beginning of March, multiple SUSD departments began collaborating to create the Educational Continuity Preparedness Plan. Extensive research was conducted on what other districts, states, and countries have been doing to prepare for distance learning academic plans. That includes digital and non-digital instruction. We want to assure our families and community that the Stockton Unified School District is dedicated to ensuring that our students continue to receive relevant and meaningful educational experiences while not in school. The district is prepared to support student instruction with distance learning academic plans that began today. This morning at each of our schools, students and families picked up student learning materials packets. Around 40,000 packets were disseminated this morning. This student work is meant to be self-guided and should be seen as a way to review and reinforce instruction students have already received from their teachers. The student learning materials being distributed are also available online for downloading and printing at www.stoptonusd.net forward slash learn from home. That's stoptonusd.net forward slash L-E-A-R-N-F-R-O-M-H-O-M-E and on all SUSD school websites. On this page, students can access the quick links also to our adopted curriculum. For example, Ready, Benchmark, or Pearson curriculum. To assist our Spanish-speaking families, the TK-8 math and reading materials include directions in Spanish. In addition, we have provided a list of free online educational resources and supports that students can access while not in school. We will continue providing the same packet throughout the week if students and families were not able to pick up today. Daily pickup times this week are from 7.30 to 8.30 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. at each school site. We also have an additional location to support families at the SUSE District Office, 701 North Madison Building Parking Lot. That pickup time is only at 3.30 to 4.30 p.m. On Monday, March 30th, we will begin distributing week two distance learning student materials packets, which will also be available throughout the week. We will offer additional content, including materials for students in special education classes, Spanish curriculum for our students enrolled in a dual language immersion school, English language development materials for our English learners, and TK-8 materials directions in Spanish once again. Please stay tuned for updates on this throughout the week. While the completion of the materials provided is not mandatory, we are asking that students save all completed distance learning assignments in the event they are collected later. For this week, we are primarily providing resources that include reading language arts, math, science, history, social studies. Students and families should know that not every high school course will be provided as we offer hundreds of courses in total across our schools. Families who need support with internet access can apply for two free months of service with Comcast through its Internet Essentials Program 
at www.internetessentials.com or by calling 1-800-934-6489. Xfinity Wi-Fi hotspots across the nation are also available to anyone who needs them for free. Please visit www.xfinity.com forward slash Wi-Fi. The success of this plan is incumbent upon many SUSD departments working together to support our classroom teachers, to aid in our collective effort to ensure student learning is continuous and ongoing outside of the four walls of our classroom. The two weeks of student learning materials packets provided are part of our short-term plan to ensure students continue to engage in learning opportunities. As this is an ongoing crisis, we are preparing for a long-term solution for the eventuality that students are out of school longer than three weeks. This includes how teachers engage with students online. Our next steps include providing guidance to our classroom teachers on how to begin providing lessons to their students remotely starting the week of April 6th. We are assembling a task force to include teachers, administrators, and students to establish protocols and processes concerning the supports around lesson planning, delivering virtual lessons, administering content-based assessments, project-based and performance assessments, ongoing timely grading and feedbacks to students, and systems to communicate with families about student progress. As I close, I would like to remind all that we are moving down a path of uncharted territory. This time of uncertainty, during this time, we all need, as all stakeholders, to remain flexible, rational, and compassionate. Thank you so much, Assistant Superintendent Sancho Lowry. I would now like to introduce our Director of Comprehensive Health Services, Ms. Bernadette Betancourt. Stockton Unified is proud to offer the new Student Support Services Hotline that will be open for families starting Monday through Friday from 8 o'clock to 3 p.m. Stakeholders can contact the helpline and they will have access to speak directly to district nurses, elementary and high school counselors, mental health clinicians, and child welfare and attendance. Callers can also leave messages for the child welfare and attendance department for all other general COVID-19 questions as they relate to Stockton Unified School District. Any messages will be left and will be returned as soon as possible. We continue to, uh, per, um, we continue to use preventative measures of social distancing hand washing for at least 20 seconds, using hand sanitizer if water and soap is not available, covering your cough and sneeze, and most of all, staying home if you're over 65 or have any chronic health conditions as outlined by the CEAT, Center for Disease Control. In addition, um, school nurses are at the uh, food distribution sites and they are providing reminders to school staff and families to be aware of social distancing and monitoring how food is being handled during food distribution. If you have a child who needs medication picked up at school, please contact the helpline and we will arrange a time in a day to hand off your child's medicine for you at school. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Bernadette Bettencourt. We appreciate all of those health protocols and tips, and thank you for putting our families first. I would now like to introduce our Interim Assistant Superintendent of Human Capital, Mr. Nick Howard. Thank you. I want to reiterate our thanks to all of our Stockton Unified team members, volunteers, and any others that helped us out today to make sure that our students were fed and had the opportunity to continue learning in this time. It's an unprecedented challenge that we're going to meet together. Um, I cannot express enough appreciation for you all. I only have a couple of minutes, so I want to jump to what is most important, and I will leave information if you have additional questions at the very end of my comments. 
We've made huge efforts to ensure that as many of our staff members as can possibly work from home during this time. Teachers are briefly visiting schools today, tomorrow, and Wednesday to retrieve what they need to provide distance learning opportunities for students. At this point, the only staff members who need to physically report to a work site every day should have been contacted by their direct supervisor. If you have not been contacted to call into a work site or to come into a work site, then you can remain at home and work remotely. If you are an employee who is 65 or older or has a chronic health condition and or you live with someone who is 65 or older or who has a chronic health condition, please do not physically report to a work site. You should enter an absence in the absence management system starting today, March 23rd, through April 3rd, and select the at-risk population reason from the drop-down menu. Our risk management team will follow up with you to ensure your health and safety is our top priority while our work continues. This does not impact remote work, and if you can perform your, your duties remotely, please continue to do so. Human Resources has been working with all of our union leaders, our principals and supervisors, and our district leaders to ensure that our students come first while still prioritizing the health and safety of our employees and ensuring that our team members continue to be fully compensated. It's been really inspiring to see us come together in this time to find creative solutions to take care of each other and most importantly to serve our students and families. I was at seven sites myself today and every single site was running smoothly and doing an amazing job um, and I saw just amazing service by our people of our kids in our community today. If I haven't answered any of the outstanding questions you may have, you can also reach us at our Human Resources main phone line for any additional questions at 209-933-7065. And our uh, front desk staff will continue monitoring those voicemails and getting those messages out to various staff members for answers. Thank you so much, Mr. Howard, for that important information for our staff. We will now move into the question and answer period of our phone call. I'm about to take the first question, but for those joining the call, this is Shelley Spesser, Director of Stockton Unified's Community Relations Department. With several team members on a Stockton Unified Coronavirus Telephone Town Hall, at any time, you can press zero to ask a question or to get help with a district issue or department. Prior to taking a call, we would like to reach out and see if our special guest is on the line. Do we have him on the line? Okay. Special guest, are you on the line? I don't know if they are or not. I don't know who 209 is. Yeah. Oh, he's there. Go Perfect. Ahead. Introduce yourself, please. How you doing? My name is Brandon Cook. That is the Brandon Cooks? It is. Oh Welcome. my goodness. We are so fortunate to have you on the call today. We heard that you had a special announcement you wanted to share with the community of Stockton. Yeah, well first uh, I just want to say I hope everyone is uh, staying healthy and, uh, and safe uh, during this time. Um, I know it can be crazy out there for us all, but I think at the end of the day, what's going on is best for us to think about uh, staying home. So I hope everyone is taking care of yourself and making sure your family is a priority. But, uh, you know, I think one of the things that I thought about with everything, all the uncertainty and everything that's going on, um, I knew I want to provide assistance and help in some sort of way. And um, the first thing I thought about was my hometown. Um, and uh, that was most important, you know, for my wife and I. And so we kind of helped start and launch this children fund. And uh, what the children fund does is it provides immediate and long-term support for youth and families um, uh, directly impacted uh, by COVID-19 uh, with goods and services. Um, the immediate focus as of now is going to be more for like meals and food supplies uh, to children suffering from shortage of food. Um, but then on a more global scale, as we can see, to just wrap things up with supplies. Uh, gloves, sanitizers, and things like that. Um, and then we all can never forget about, you know, at-home education, the education needs, especially during a time uh, where school is canceled. 
I think it's very important that the children continue to, uh, you know, get educated and continue to learn during a time like this. Um, so that's really what the fund is going to be uh, focusing on heavily. And, um, you know, for me and my wife, uh, this is something we want to help out with. Uh, and we hope others can uh, join along uh, with the movement and continue to just focus on our children that's throughout the city um, that has no control over any of this um, and families that are in need. But that's the biggest thing I want to talk about uh, on the phone, and uh, I'm just honored that you guys had me on the phone call. Um, and I look forward to continue to build it uh, upon this. Brandon, we are incredibly thankful that you were able to call in. I, there's probably not a single person who needs this bit of information, but in case there is just one person on this call who might not be familiar with your name, uh, Brendan is a wide receiver for the Los Angeles Rams, a native Stocktonian. Um, did play for a period of time to an amazing team back east, which would be the New England Patriots, with, with this accent was my home team. Um, and Brandon, uh, it's my understanding that you made an amazing philanthropic gift today to start this fund. Could you talk a little bit about the gift? Uh, yes. Um, my wife and I decided to uh, donate $50,000 um, you know, to the Children's Fund uh, that I was just talking about. Um, I think, from the, like I said in the beginning, the biggest thing I knew I wanted to help in some sort of way uh, with everything that's going on in our world and what better place than your hometown uh, who, need, who needs help. Um, and it's very close to my heart still. So I just wanted to, we wanted to find our way and figure out a way to be able to help as best as possible. And we hope that our gift uh, goes a long way and uh, encourages others to help out as well during a time like this. I mean, that's very, very grateful. It's, it's beyond words of our generosity and stepping up uh, as a community, as a community leader, even from afar. Um, Brandon today made that contribution of $50,000 to help establish the Stockton Children's Fund. And it's being run from our community foundation of San Joaquin. On their website, um, led by their CEO and President Moses Zapian, our information. Uh, and I, I just want to... Uh, close my comments by again thanking you for your leadership and really encouraging people to hear the line that Brandon said and that is others can match and others can also contribute to this and follow your leadership. Uh, Brandon for the 40,000 students uh, we're deeply grateful. I don't know if anybody wants to well, make thank comments. You, thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much Brandon and Amazing. we appreciate you thinking of the students and families of Stockton. Very impressed, and Absolutely. we just cannot thank you and your wife enough. And Brendan Maritubs here again, Absolutely. with everyone else said thank you. Um, it's important that you continue to represent Stockton so well on the national stage, but you're not forgetting about Stockton giving back. Um, so on behalf of all the children, students, parents, we appreciate you, you inspire us, and thank you. I think for those of you all listening, he also said something else that was important. He said, stay at home again to mitigate yeah. the spread of coronavirus in our community we all have to do our part be part of the winning team like mr cooks give back where we can mm -hmm. but also make sure that we stay at home as much as possible you can watch videos of last year's season if you want to at the ramp <laughs> now there's other things you can do <laughs> uh, uh, we got better things to handle but uh <laughs> so thank you guys again for having me on the call but yeah the biggest thing is taking care of you I mean, I work out for a living, but even I'm itching to get outside. But at the end of the day, I know what's best uh, for our communities and our cities. So um, listen to those uh, that's empowering uh, everything else to come to an end uh, at some point. So thank you again for having me on the phone call, and uh, I look forward to talking with you guys again soon. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. And thank you All for right. being stopping so strong. We appreciate you. We're now going to move no to, oh, you too, take care. We're now going to move to one of our callers on the phone. I've got that. We're going to dispel from Glenda. This question, rather, is from Glenda. Is her son's school going to provide homework to do at home? Also, we don't have a computer. Can we borrow one? That's from Glenda. So um, two answers to that, um, two parts. One is, yes, we are going to begin to do that, and teachers are going to begin to customize that beginning next week as they plan individually for their own classes. 
Uh, I think we are all realizing that this is going to go longer than two weeks. And so that's why teachers are preparing for that. Young people, scholars who do not have a computer, we are preparing in the district for a distribution of the technology we have at our schools to put in your hands. You should stay tuned for that. This week and a half to two weeks is to give you work while we get technology to you to begin that. Thank you for the question. All right. And we have another one. I'm sorry, go ahead, I oh, apologize. No worries, we're ready for the next call. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, Diane's an employee. She wants to know if she's going to be paid. Yes. Um, <laughs> we've, we've written to every employee, and we, we have phoned every employee, and worked with every one of our labor leaders, um, the presidents of the unions. We actually met with every labor leader before the crisis caused us to close school and said that if we were ever in this case, this district commits to the full pay and salary of every employee in the system. That has not changed. Not only are we proud of that, it's just the right thing to do in these very difficult times. So the answer is yes. From the Spanish, um, just from the Spanish side, Anna asks, when will children return to school? The answer to that, we do not have this evening. And we won't know that for a bit of time. We're probably going to have to take this every two to three weeks across the state. You know, our governor made it really clear that this was going to be a long-term health care crisis. The best thing to do is to check regularly on our website, and we keep a banner about when the schools are closed until. And I know that for a fact this week that banner, unfortunately, is going to have to be updated again about the next date we are hoping to open. Our next question is from Evelyn, and the question goes like this. If schools are closed until the fall semester, what does that mean for graduating seniors? Well, Evelyn, I, I don't know how many times I got that question today, so thank you for raising it on the news. We hope that is not the case. Um, however, we are planning as if it might be. And so there is a team in the district that is planning for how to make sure, first and foremost, seniors and graduates get their diploma and get their transcript and their life continues as they go on to work or the military, public service, um, or post-secondary college or university. That will not be interrupted. The actual issue of a commencement and a graduation ceremony, like the amazing ones that we have every year, that is going to have to look differently if we get to that point. So we are considering a variety of options that will allow people to first have their diploma and the transcript, no matter what happens. And then secondly, find a venture, an opportunity, might be in the future, to create the atmosphere that we're also used to. And, and by the way, that's going to be the same for promotions to high school and promotions at elementary. And truly, some of the most amazing things are the pre-K promotions. Um, all of those are going to have to look differently um, this year. But I want to close by saying every single senior will get their diploma and their transcript, and we can take care of that. Uh, so Nicole asks, um, what, is, what is the engineering with the cleaning of schools? What is the engineering with the cleaning of schools? So I appreciate that. It's been extensive. It is uh, a feat that we have not done at this level, meaning every single surface in every building. Um, has been cleaned according to the state and county, which are the same guidelines, and the Centers for Disease Control. So it involves uh, cleaning, it involves the appropriate chemicals that have been used and approved, and it involves um, deep cleaning, which is surfaces that aren't normally seen, but taken care of and cleaned. That's been going on because we did have the week of what was break. Um, and so by tomorrow, that will be have done at all of our sites. And then we continue to clean. For example, if a teacher goes into their classroom to pick up their computer, we reclean that classroom again. From, from the Spanish side, Maria asks, can I take my child out to play or is the air infected? Can my child go outside to play at all? Should I always supervise what he touches? 
I'm going to ask Bernadette because she answers this question all day long. If you could help us, Bernie. Sure. So if you have your child to go out and play, you just want to make sure that you're keeping social distances between who, you're play who your children are playing with. Um, covering if they're coughing or sneezing, making sure that they're covering their mouth with their elbow. Um, it would be good to have some hand sanitizer with you if there's not a sink for washing with soap and water. So those are just basic guidelines and precautions that the CDC is asking everybody to take. Um, and when you're not feeling well, not going out and do not be out in public and stay home. Thank you for that. Let me get let me get back to my board here if I can. Our next question is from Chris. He's a teacher with the Stockton United School District. Given the recent stay home order, does that mean school will be closed for the rest of the year? Um, Chris, first of all, like everybody, thank you for working with us in Stockton and our students. Second is we don't know the answer to that question. We will take that guidance from both the governor and state health. Um, at the moment, as you can see across the state, long-term closures um, are beginning to look like a very real possibility. I wish I knew the answer because it would make all our lives easier for planning, but we don't. So we are planning for a long-term closure um, and preparing for it. Uh, but we will actually get that information um, as it becomes available. All right. Let's keep taking some questions. Let's take this next question. It's from uh, Vilma, and Vilma goes, she's trying to find a way to get information about her high school children's homework. Is there a website or phone number she can call to get this information? A website or phone number she can call to get this information? So we have provided for this week information that was not two weeks ago homework so this is actually the work that are in classes as we return because we didn't return to open classrooms everything is at home at the moment so today across the entire district packets of curriculum and work were distributed at every single school and you are free to go to that school again tomorrow or any day this week or you can come here to 701 North Madison, 3.30 in the afternoon. And if you're in elementary, the grade level packet is ready for you. If you're in high school, the major core subjects are available, like Algebra 1, Algebra 2, Biology. Them till we see where we go long term, and we will continue that. I'm going to ask our assistant superintendent to remind us of our website again, where you can find this information. Thank you. The website is www.stocktonusd.net forward slash learn from home. Say it one more time, please. www. You don't need the W's. Just Stockton. Start from Stockton, please. Stocktonusd.net forward slash learn from home. And Lewis, on the Spanish side, you were asking your daughter where you can go to your classroom on, online. That's the answer, correct? Yes. So when we move out into the next week and the week after, you'll, students and families will go to their school's website, and most of the work will be deposited in the school website, as opposed to the entire district doing this. So keep an eye on both, and that will be ready for you. You know, I'm going to take another question from the Spanish side because it dovetails. Salomon asked, the school package that we received today, will we, we get this weekly when virtual classes are and when virtual classes are going to start? So again, the question, the school package that we received today, do we get this weekly? Um, Good question. Let Sanja help us. So thank you. We will have two weeks of these kinds of work packets for students for practice. Um, at home, uh, covering skills that they've already been instructed on from their classroom teachers. Beginning the week of April 6th, we'll begin that instruction that is just for those particular classrooms or courses from their particular <coughs> teachers. So the week of April 6th is where that individualized instruction will begin. 
I might also add at this point to all of our callers, callers who are listening that, like all of us, we received information late last week that the regular traditional state testing program mm -hmm. uh, is going to be waived this year. So all of us in schools know uh, May and April are the time when we take those state tests. That is going to be waived. Different guidance is also out about courses that are very specific that are national, like AP Advanced Placement. And if you're in one of those courses in a high school only, they have created the opportunity to finish that course as well, and you'll get that information from your own high school. Gotcha. Let's take uh, Shirley's question goes like this. Um, when can my daughter take advantage of the free lunches for kids in need? That's a very important question, and we want to repeat this um, as many times as possible. Immediately. They were available today, and they will be available every weekday as long as schools are closed on our website <clears throat> excuse me on our website is a list of the 28 schools that we are distributing lunch and the way it works is that you drive up young scholar is in the car and you tell us how many of our young scholars need lunch and you are given lunch and tomorrow morning's breakfast at the same time so that you have lunch and breakfast and then you can return if you continue to need that. If your own school is not listed on our website, then you are free to go to the school that's closest to your house that is distributing food. I'm going to take Tanny's question because it's pretty tight in here too. Lunch, how do we get lunch if we don't have transportation and rides? So one of the things that is also available is that there is a citywide helpline that people can find out information for transportation, period, around that piece. Uh, if I don't remember correctly, I think it's 211. 211. That is where we send people for mobility opportunities and concerns. The other opportunity is to ask a neighbor or a classmate, family member, and to when you come to the school to let us know about that condition and we will try to make uh, an opportunity for you to have that. But community-wide, there are a number of folks who are struggling with that and we know that there is a clearinghouse for help with that. Say the number again, please. It's 211. Thank you. It's just 211 for that. Yeah. Nothing more than just 211. Okay, I'm going to take another question from the English side. A uh, parent needs the helpline phone number for counselors and nurses. Uh, this is the Lennox needs a, the helpline for counselors and nurses, etc. What number is that, please? So, um, while you were listening to this broadcast, you probably received a phone call from our office which told you all of this. So, if you have a recording machine, go back and get that. And then also what we want to say is we can list this over the telecast, but there'll be a publication and it'll be on our website starting this evening. So area code 209, of course, and the number is 933-7111. Let me just repeat that. So for our student support services helpline, where you might want to speak to a nurse or a counselor, or a mental health clinician, or you want to leave a message for child welfare and attendance, what you want to do is dial area code 209-933-7111. Say it one more time just for the heck of it, please. Sure. It's 933-7111. Got it. Thank you so much for that. This is a question more for the mayor. Uh, it's from the Spanish side. Jacinina, uh, can we leave Stockton or not? Can we travel out of our community? That's a great question. Thank you for asking. So again, the county, um, the governor um, have issued stay at home or shelter in place order, orders, um, which mean essentially what they say, um, stay in place, shelter in place, stay home as much as possible. 
Um, exceptions are given for essential things like going to the pharmacy, or going to the bank, or going to get food, etc. But because this disease is highly contagious, because oftentimes symptoms you don't see them if you have them, um, that's important that we stay at home as much as possible to mitigate the spread so that one day in the near future we can go back to moving as freely as we're used to. Um, so I would say if it's not an essential, 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 essential reason to travel, um, you should stay at home. We might also want to add um, to the mayor's clarification that picking up your curriculum packet and picking up lunch are considered essential and permissible. We want people to come and get their lunch because that is part of the order that is allowable. Let me ask another question to the mayor if I can here. It's from Spanish side from Jose. What happens if I can't pay the rent because of the, uh, the, 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 the uh, coronavirus? Will I be evicted? So there's the eviction moratorium now um, in, in the city for the next couple of months. Um, but that's an eviction moratorium, which is different than a rent freeze. So eviction moratorium just means that you can't rent is a due eventually. Um, so I would advise anyone who is renting to have a conversation with the landlord just about sort of what you can pay now. Um, but know that the rent isn't freezing. So once in the near future we're done with this, the landlord will, will probably want their rent. So we don't want people evicted during this time. We're working extremely hard. I've been on the phone with senators and Congress people um, about giving some sort of cash um, stimulus to folks um, during the time of this coronavirus kind of help for those of us who aren't able to go to work or who are going to get laid off because of stay-at-home orders. Um, but with that being said, there's no evictions that are permissible, um, but the rent will be due eventually. Um, so I would plan on paying what I can, what you can now, um, but knowing eventually once we're out of this crisis that your landlord will, will probably try to collect the rest of the rent. Gotcha, Marlene. Do I have to have a vehicle, or can I walk and? If they ran out of lunches, and this is one of the elementary schools. What's your thoughts? Uh, that's an excellent question. I'm glad you asked that, and I apologize for not mentioning that. People can absolutely walk to school and pick up both their curriculum packet and their lunch. There is a line for walkers, and then there's obviously a line for traffic. Just like when I was at my school this morning that I was working at, walkers come up, they wait, they let us know how many, and we hand them their lunches and they walk off. The one thing that is also a guideline, a federal guideline, is you can't eat your lunch on the school property. You have to go home and eat it. But absolutely, people can walk and pick up their lunches or their curriculum, and many have. Uh, Deborah asks, um Will the effect, will all this affect the kids' grades? How will that be handled in the end? I, I would say, Deborah, every teacher is asking the same thing. And, <laughs> and the answer is, this cannot harm children. It can't harm their grade. It's got no fault. It's not like you didn't hand in your homework. You couldn't come to school. And so we're working on this question so that everybody has the same answer across the entire system. But the most important thing, and I know I speak for all the teachers, is that uh, no one can be harmed as a result of that. Uh, and then obviously we are working with the state authorities, particularly for seniors, in terms of credits necessary and access to that um, and statewide requirements. I am sure that guidance and decisions will come out within a week or two on just that issue. But generally across the system, um, students will not be harmed as a result of this. Rebecca asks, do parents have to be present when children, uh, for children to receive their meals? If they're not sure of the student's age, do they get their food anyway? That's um, from Rebecca. Yes, thank you. Young people need to be with their parents, uh, guardians or caregivers um, in the car or walking up in order to get that. That is not our requirement, it's a federal requirement. They need to be. And we are serving lunch to every one of our scholars from pre-K to 12. And we have a couple of specialty programs uh, for young adults who are receiving special services 
Uh, otherwise, no one is denied a lunch or breakfast. With that, we've got about five minutes to wrap up for everybody in the room to find a, provide us any final comments. I don't know where you want to start, so let's start with some final comments, if we could, please. We've got five minutes to wrap up. Go ahead, please. I would come around the table. I'm Nick. Yeah, the only thing I would add for our, our Stock Unified staff is that we are starting to take all the communications that we've sent to you and make sure that they're on our district uh, COVID-19 website so that you can go back and look at those. Um, if you feel like you missed something or anything like that. Um, and, and please always reach out with any questions that you have and me and my team will get back to you as quickly as we possibly can. Um, again, we wanna make sure that we're putting kids first, um, but that we're also really, really vigilant in um, making sure that our people have the ability to do their work either in person or remotely. And lastly, making sure that we take the health and safety of our, our employees very, very seriously as well. Sanja. Please look for information to come out over the course of this well, next uh, week. What can where we may you inform us tomorrow? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. For some reason, we have some Spanish translation coming on this side. Okay, so stop thank you. that, please. Go ahead and finish with some final comments. Please. please look for information to come out over the course over this next week, uh, where we are identifying need for those uh, that need support around technology. Um, so that we can ensure that all students have access and opportunity um, in this distance learning uh, time here in Stockton Unified. Thank you, Shelley. Yeah, so we really appreciate all of the questions and those that have participated uh, via the teleconference call and watching us on Facebook Live. Um, two friendly reminders. We ask that families and stakeholders of Stockton Unified make sure to download our mobile app. You will receive all the push notifications right to your cell phone and you can access all of the COVID-19 updates and information there. We also want to remind you that we will continue to monitor all of our social media and we are doing our best to answer all the questions um, that we're receiving on those platforms as well. So again, make sure that you are following us on all of our platforms and take time to download our mobile app. Thank you. Thank you. Bernadette? I just want to emphasize the importance of hand washing for 20 seconds. Make sure you're covering your cough and your sneeze. Social distancing is extremely important. Six feet away from the person around you. Um, if you have symptoms and you are ill with a fever, a cough, or having difficulty breathing, please call your primary care provider over the phone. Do not run to the first emergency room. You wanna call your primary care doctor first, unless you are in an emergency situation and you need to go to the emergency room. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, so again, this is tough for everyone, um, but in the interest of public health, which means my health, which, mean, which means your health, which means your kids' health, your partner's health, health, your grandparents' health. We all have to do our part to, again, wash our hands, socially distance, um, and stay at home. And this only works if we all do it. We all have to do this together, but, and we also have to look out for one another. So if there's seniors in your community who can't go to the grocery store, let's go to the grocery store for them. If you have free time, you want to volunteer with the school district or our food banks or our shelter, please do so. And again, we all have to take a little bit of a sacrifice, but together we'll emerge through this a stronger, more united city. Thanks. I'll, I'll close with a couple of comments. One is, I know I speak for behalf of the Board of Education who have been very, very clear that whatever and anything we can do to be supportive of our families, that is what our mission is. And that is how we have been acting. And then the second thing I just want to say is um, to every student and to our parents and to our workers, we just simply, we love you and we care about you. And we will be calm and there with you throughout this. Um, and this is going to end. It will end and we will come back together and we will continue. And I think that it's really important for people to realize that we virtually have our arms around this entire community and we will get through this. Um.